What's up, guys? Back with another art class. Um, I'm eating a lollipop right now, so and it's like you know when you first bite it and it gets like stuck in your teeth and like, that. That's what's happening right now. But anyways, um, welcome to class. Um, I still have yet to configure a way <laughs> of filming this the best way so that you can see me. I think I should have like a stand behind my shoulder. You know, would be cool if I could like attach my phone to my head like a flashlight so you could see everywhere I was looking. That'd be cool, but so far that's not the case. So we're going to have a chat. I'm going to review kind of the color thing that we talked about last week because that's important. And then I'm going to turn it down like this so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, today we're going to do just like a really simple, really fun creativity ex exercise. It's going to challenge you to look at things in a different perspective, kind of, and um, it's something you can do all the time. I do it all the time as an artist. It's actually kind of how I first started to do art, but we'll get into all of that. So um, anyways, quiz time. Obviously, you're not being graded on this, so just do your best for your own self. Don't be embarrassed about getting the wrong answer because you're at your house alone. What are the primary colors? First of all, what does it mean? And then tell me what the, what they actually, which ones they are. Go ahead. I'll give you some time. I should get a wheel. I'll get one to one while you're thinking. Okay. Primary colors. This is janky, sorry. Are red, yellow, and blue. Notice how it's every other one. So it's primary, not primary, primary, not primary, primary, not primary. What are the not primary ones? Secondary. So it's primary, secondary, primary, secondary, primary, secondary, or one, two, one, two, one, two. That's how I've labeled this one. Um, so the primary colors are red, yellow, blue. Secondary colors are what happened when you mix those. So like orange, green, and purple are the secondary colors because when you mix red plus yellow, you get orange. When you mix orange plus blue, those are both primary, you get green, okay? Um, complementary colors, what are those? Correct, kind of. They're the ones, the ones that are opposite each other on the wheel. So, and we'll talk about what they do. Ah! So, Oh my God, are you serious? So we have opposites. So again, these arrows, purple and yellow, red and green, orange and blue. Okay. And what do they do? Complementary colors, well, they complement each other because if you put them next to each other, they'll be, they'll really stand out. So if you put red and green together, it, it stands out. Whether you think so by looking at this or not, it just does. And the all, the other thing is if you mix the complementary colors, it's funny because they do not complement each other at all. They, in fact, mix into like mud. So if I were to ask you, or they, they turn it into like a dark brownish blackish, basically. Um, so that is another using complementary colors is another way to darken a picture instead of just adding black so say i am drawing a banana with yellow and but there's some shading on it um and i don't want to use black because black with yellow it just gets mucky which just trust me on that but another option is to just add a little bit of purple and it'll darken it up a little bit um so the reason i want to refresh your brain on that is because i want you to utilize that today when we make are, I guess it's a drawing today. We're doing a drawing. Um, so keep those things in mind. I don't want to see any mixed colors that shouldn't, unless you're trying to darken, unless you're trying to make it brown or black or whatever. Um, so, okay. So I basically, I think we're just going to hang out and I'm going to show you what to do and let you do it alongside of me. I am going to put on some music because that's what I always do when I do art. I am not painting today, by the way, if you want to, like, Totally, of course, go for it, but um, I don't want to make a mess. So if you have all your paints out already and stuff ready to go, you're obviously welcome to. But I'm just today using, I have some of these crayons. They're like the rolly uppy crayons and just some markers. And there might be some colored pencils in here, whatever. We'll see. Okay, so. Let's get confusing. 
Indeed. So, I am going to start off, and I am just going to draw a random squiggle. I'm not trying to make it look like anything at all. I'm just going to squiggle, okay? So, I'm even. I'm actually even going to do this with, like, my eyes closed. So, I'm going to take my paper, and I'm just going to squiggle. And that's what it looks like. I see a lot of things in this already. So what you're gonna do is come up with an image based on that squiggle. So what do I mean by that? Well, right away I can see this to me looks like like a really long mustache. And like this guy, it's his head is this way, and that's his mustache. So if I drew some eyes right there, it would look like a face, right? Or I can turn it this way too. So I want you to look at it from all angles. This looks like like a I don't, it looks like a, it reminds me of like a gourd, like a Thanksgiving Halloween type of gourd, but I don't know what this would be. So that's where it gets a little bit tricky. I don't know, what do you see? I flip it this way. It looks like like racing, like something's going fast. So I would, I always see faces, just that's just what I do. You guys are all going to see different stuff. I'm not encouraging you to only look at, look for faces, but like I could literally see like a face right here and a face right here like two eyes and like maybe they're like snakes or something like that i don't know same thing this is like the same thing as the sideways guy so there's his mustache there's his head and eyes would be there okay so i want you to take your squiggle and make something out of it and i'm not talking about like just like i don't want it to look abstract it can if that's what you're inspired to do, but I want you to challenge yourself by looking for something in this, these lines, okay? So we're just going to hang out and color, and I will talk to you as I'm doing it, and any thoughts that come up, I'll let you know. I'm definitely going to go with the, the guy with the mustache, but I think I do want to do him sideways, to be honest with you. So grab your markers, your pencils, your colored pencils, your crayons, your paint, whatever it is. Just your, I often, my, my nickname is Amy Ink, you guys. I don't know what you mean. Um, and it's because I use pen all the time to just like color and stuff. So, here we go. I'm starting off with like really, really simple stuff. I'm not going into detail at all. I'm just getting that concept down. He has like a widow's peak. That is not really true. Oh, his chin must be here somewhere. Can you see what I'm doing? I wish I had it like tilted. <laughs> everyone's like okay i did it i'm done like no we're we have to color it in we have to add shading we have to add you know some words who knows you have to finish it the whole point of this is to make it look like it on a wall in a gallery okay so it needs to look finished Oh, I didn't want to his neck. Yeah, 
his chin. So I know a little bit about anatomy, so I'm able to add a little bit of that. darken up around his cheeks because you can see like if I'm sideways like this like see that line right there right and I can use my own face as a reference too. the shadow on this side you see that shadow there shadow a little bit above my eye but we're not gonna go into that crease right here shadow right there That almost looks like his tongue, it's kind of funny. Notice that I'm being like thoughtful with all of my brush strokes. I'm not just coloring it in just to color it in. Like, I want to see my brush strokes kind of go in the way that his skin goes. Like, his chin's right here, this arch, so I'm coloring along it and building off of that. I'm not just coloring with this. So I have like a little divot under my lip, so it's like shadow. It's darker right there. Let me give him one of those. Super fun, and it's important that I do return to that practice just because, again, I'm creating for myself on my own. I used to call it playing God, I'm not gonna lie. Some of your parents might not like that though. I mean, no harm. Thank you. 
Um, something worth discussing. Like not pressing down and hard scribbling, right? Um, there's something called cross hatching. A lot of you might already know what this is. Basically, so when you color something, say I'm coloring this card, okay, I'm going to use the same exact brush that I use to color the card. The same direction, like for the brush strokes or the pen strokes or the grain, whatever it is. Okay, so I'm going from here to here. your face you're just seeing like where the shadows fall and stuff where the light is actually hitting you you and anyone else that would be there sometimes it's like a question of where do i stop there is a technique, a style of art, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's literally when things get left unfinished. So you might have seen some of these paintings before. Um, so it'll be like in the middle of it, and it'll do really, really detailed stuff here, and then this will just be like dribbled off. I really hope you guys can see that. Okay, um, and that's cool, like, because then it looks like a painting. Otherwise, if you're doing realism, like, why not just take a picture of it, right? We want it to look like it's a painting. Like, yeah, realism is awesome, but like, there's something to be said about being able to see some of the brush strokes, you know, just to tell you, just be proud of the fact that it's a painting and not a photo. How are you guys doing on your pictures? Just keep going. I can't say that enough. Just keep going. There it is. You get lost, like, what do I do now? I'm gonna draw. That's a good. I, that's a good thing to show you guys right now. I need a pen. Dang it! All right, I'll use colored pencil. It's really well. I'm bored here. Say I'm not. Polka dots and stars. Like, who knows? First of all, I am going to 
make it a little bit more hair-ish. And then, I don't know, maybe this line can continue. Yeah, Again, strokes in the in the direction that you want it to go. So if you're trying to make a curve, it's pretty much impossible to just draw a circle perfectly. So you gotta like keep working at it. Like I would do this all the time and just wait for that circle to appear. Like, I see it while I'm doing this. Before I write it down, I can kind of see the pattern of it. And then I start tapping in, literally. This is the part where I'm kind of like seeing some, I'm getting an idea here. So I see all these stars. I see this circle that I just hit randomly now, kind of on accident. I'm kind of seeing like a night sky. So I'm gonna work on that. That sounds like a cool idea, I think. Um, I made kind of a circle out of his beard too. Kind of looks like orbit, like, or like Saturn or something. <laughs> kind of looks like just an ant to me. Like, I have an idea. Hey, so I'm gonna go with that orbit hanging planets. Little teeth as well, or better term. So I'm just gonna draw some little planets. It looks like planets floating around. I don't know what galaxy this is because it's definitely not ours. Yeah. This is like the sun or whatever, a sun, and then planets going around it. So I'm going to color those in, and then I'm going to, it does look like an egg, so I'm going to play off of that a little bit and kind of make it look like an egg too. Interesting. So I'm going to use, knowing that it's going to be an egg, I'm going to kind of treat it that way and uh, color it yellow. make it pop a little and this is a fluorescent marker so it probably works it does it doesn't <laughs> it does not work throw that away blue planets. Red planet. And again, planets all look different, so like maybe they have some weird patterns going on. You know, Jupiter or Neptune has all those 
twirly swirlies or whatever. I'm gonna go with that idea. Maybe it's like a Saturn. like got fire coming off of it so yeah. it's like the sun no, the sun does that it's kind of what it looks like it got flares that's their called flares like the earth kind of Let's make one that looks like Earth, actually. That's box. And then it's colored in blue, right? You can kind of, like I said, play God. You can kind of just make up your own world. have no red marker I thought it was red okay well I use pink that's fine I think I gotta pour in these moons somehow oh, I did already yeah. okay now I'm gonna go back in and see how there's like a where the orbit is, I'm just gonna make that a little bit more obvious with that pencil so it's not too dark. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna bring some of these stars down here just so it makes a little more sense. And then, like I said, I kind of want to, oh, first of all, I need to shadow this a little bit more, so how am I going to do that? Make it darker with what color is yellow? So I'm going to use purple. marker to outline it. Hope this works. Yes, it does. And I'm just going to draw some boomy. And I am going 
to color this in slightly yellow as if some of the maybe some of the yellow already ran or something. Okay. Again, this is on a flat surface. He's cool. I like it. Or it could be. I definitely like it this way because the egg is sideways. Okay, couple things. Now I want to make it apparent that this is like on a table, so that this looks like it is hanging off of something. Maybe it's like even on a cup, like a. You know what I mean? Like a chalice. I don't know. I don't want to get too far into it, but I do want to make oh a landmass behind him, and then he needs a little bit more attention too. He needs even more detail, more eyebrows. He needs obviously lips colored and stuff like that. Okay, so go. So I'm going to draw, he's like, it's like a land mass. You'll see what I mean, I hope. That it's resting on. And again, I want it, I want, I still want him to be the focus. So this stuff is already really dark, so I'm going to do it in crayon so that it doesn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like overpower it compete with it. There you go. And it, a little mess is probably going to have a lot of brown to it. So, it's black. Because blacks really look brown. Give me some black and some orange. Black and orange will give you a good brown, by the way. Wait, I think. There's some like patches of dirt. I don't know. I'm probably going to come back to that concept because I don't know what I'm doing. But I can at least see it's like resting on something, right? Even be. I wish I had. Maybe he has like a hole in his chest. <gasps> That's what I'm doing. Oh, first of all, hold on. coming through his skin for some reason. We're not sure why. That is his skin. Maybe it's like under his armpit. I don't know. Right? It's coming up over it. Yeah, I like that. So that's his arm then, I guess. Then that means his body is down here. He's got like his little nippies. Get it? <laughs> Hold on, I'm, I'm trying to think about it too. That little has changed. And then take the arm. I need to darken this side of it. Of his other arm, you get that? That's cool. This needs to be bigger. 
more obvious. Yeah. What I'm doing with all these angles and stuff is really complicated. I do not expect for you guys to be able to do this right now. I'm just painting, drawing for my own self because it's fun. And I hope that you're doing the same. Oh, sorry. It's like this earth mass is like wrapping around him now. Okay. Um. I need some lips. Now, everybody wants to like color in lips like red or pink or something. Unless you're wearing lipstick, that's not the case. Like, look at my lips compared. I mean, they're definitely like pink er, but they're skin color still. It's just like a darker version of my skin. So we don't want to use. That's not it. Like, <laughs> clearly, doesn't match. Um, you can definitely use red to mix into the color, but I'm actually gonna go with that same orangey brown that I was using. Just to outline it. Sun hits it in the middle. The light hits it in the middle, so it's darker, lighter, darker. I don't know how to explain that very well. We'll get to that someday, but that's what I'm doing that. Now, I do want to know a little bit pinkier, like purplier, so I'm going to add some blue and see what happens. Maybe brown. So I'm going to use myself as a reference, so looking this way, ah. Little baby old man. All this talking I'm doing, I'm hoping I'm not obviously distracting you and that you're doing your own work. But even if you're not and you're just watching my process, that's definitely a learning experience too, can be. And I don't take that lightly either. So hopefully I'm not distracting you, is all I'm saying. Too. Just drawing hair, how they look. Hairs are little lines, right? Like little thin. So I'm just drawing. So you might think you're done, but like there's always something more, like adding hair, adding eyebrows, adding you know detail to make those eyebrows look better. Is and that's how the piece gets like finished. You know? Thank you. 
come out and like like my hair it's not just one this isn't all one hair right so if my hair doesn't go doop it's all of these i have to think about i'm obviously not gonna these are like millions of pieces of hair but i want to think about drawing each individual one so when you do hair or facial hair whatever it is again you're drawing each individual like you want to think about that drawing oh and eyelashes with this right like you're drawing each so many eyelashes if you have which you obviously have many not just one and one full stroke can be the whole entire thing so if i have really long hair say this is my face and i've drawn long hair on here it's for part i go all the way down and I'm just going to keep doing that. Okay. As opposed to just being like... Um, I am going to darken this out a little bit more so this is more obvious, but just kind of base here. Where it's going to go down. Where it's going to go down. Where it's going to go Sit back and look. A big part of the process is sitting back and looking. Already I see that there's way too much right here going on. I'm gonna just spread these around a little more. So kind of like a fade them out. This reminds me of I went to Paris years and years ago and there was like this house, like a gallery workspace type of thing. start something you gotta commit and just do it otherwise it will come across as here it comes across what you were thinking of at the time it it just does and it's like the weirdest thing you wouldn't think that like you would notice your anguish or whatever it is that you're feeling but you do like so if you're timid if you're being timid it, you can tell in a painting Okay, I'm just going to darken up a few more things and then call it. Like his lower body definitely needs some attention, I think, and his arms. It's like his elbow, so. Just... 
Get the hair to actually be darker. That's blue. Okay, I don't like his widow's peak, but that's what we're gonna do. point across and I definitely got some details in there but this could be gone over and over and over again um so this is where we left off I definitely like it that way yeah he's so cute right <laughs> silly looking guy so I'm trying to think of what else I could do to make it a little bit more detailed honestly I would probably just keep going over the same spots and over them and over them the more you work on it the more it's gonna develop um I'm like already I want to do some more eyebrows here. <laughs> He's not really thick. And actually, mustache too should do the same. And I mean, I could keep doing this and doing this and doing this. Like, sometimes it's like an art piece can never actually be finished, and sometimes they never are. But this one we left on today. What do you think I should call it? A fried egg on the other side of the world. This part needs. Hello. That's my cue. Like a solo? Yeah. Well, today's art day, though. Not dancing. Well, we went to... I forgot, I forgot to ask you a question.